Hello, you guys. Um, welcome to week seven, or last week, um, lesson 19. Um, this is about writing quadratic equations given certain circumstances or conditions. In this case, a situation where um, my, I would always encourage you to do a drawing. Obviously, we have um, more than a sketch here, but a nice little drawing for us to look at. Um, the x and y axes have been kind of drawn for us. Uh, you know, we've been spending a lot of time talking about projectile motion kind of situations. So I like this idea of talking about um, construction where, you know, you will see parabolas a lot in, in bridges. They're, they really make for some strong structures. So this is an example where we have that arched bridge, right? And the height of the arch is 4.05 feet and the length along the water, so this is going over water, is 18 feet. Okay. All right, so, you know, the first thing we should do if we're going to bother with a diagram is to label that diagram then. So what was given and um, what, where can we draw it on our, our uh, sketch here? So 4.05 feet, they're saying is the height of the arch. Okay, so that's that maximum point right here somewhere, about, about right here, okay? And that's going to be the y value that's provided for us, right? So 4.05. Um, x value they didn't give me, so we're going to touch back on that in just a minute. The other thing they gave us was that the length along the water here was 18 feet. So we've had time along here now. Now we're going to have a length. So these are both going to be measurements, right? So the height and the width. So if this is our x value when y is 0, we would label it like this, right? And so what would we think this was? Oh, that's our starting point, right? So that's 0, 0. Here's our 18. So could we figure out our x value here? And if this is the maximum point, right, we have this axis of symmetry going through our graph, right? Where this divides this into two symmetrical halves, right? So this has to be halfway between our x-intercepts, right? So what would this be then? Well, half of 18 is 9, right? So now I have these three coordinates that I can use to write my quadratic function, right? Well, what are those formats that I can choose from, right? Well, we could write it in standard, which, remember, is that ax squared plus bx plus c. We could write it in vertex, which is x minus h squared plus k, where this digit and this digit would tell me the, the x and the y value of the vertex. And we could write it in factored form, which gives me those x-intercepts or roots or zeros, right? And again, when this is subtraction, this digit is one of the roots. And when it's subtraction, this digit is the, or number, is the other root, okay? Okay, so, you know, I, I given the vertex, I'm given the x-intercepts, so factored might make sense. I can choose either one of these. Um, I wouldn't go here, but uh, let's just go with um, factored, um, given that we have some roots up here, right? Um, I'm going to label this vertex up here real quick. Uh, and so I'm just going to choose that, you know. Now, you know, easy enough, I would just plug in to that form. Okay, what were my roots? 0 and 18. Done. That's pretty easy, right? Now, hopefully, you're thinking to yourself, now, wait a minute. What do we know about parabolas like this that open downward? They have an a value that is negative, right? So we know this one is negative. 
And it also gives me the shape of that bridge. This is not the same shape that we would see in a master function, right? So we don't have an A value that's one. This is probably much wider and it's been reflected over the x-axis. It's a downward opening. So the issue right now is what is that A value? So I don't have that written in here. And I can't just assume it's one because in this case we know it's at least gotta be negative and we know it's wide. And so it's probably going to be a fraction because it's been compressed, right? The distance that it's traveling on that y-axis is getting shortened. Okay, so what we have to do is figure out that A value. And this is why last week you did some review with linear equations that what if we had given points, how would we write it in slope intercept? Well, we found the slope and then we had to find the y intercept and we borrowed one of these other points, plugged it in and solved for the y intercept of b. That same process is what we do when we have quadratic equations. We've plugged in one of these points, this root and this root, two points technically. I'm gonna borrow this point, plug it in temporarily so that I can solve for A. So in other words, when instead of H and K, we're gonna just say it's an X and Y point, an X and a Y point. So here's the y value, right? Still trying to figure out what a is. I already had plugged in the 0 and the 18, the roots. But I am going to be looking for a, so I can't have other variables in here. So the x coordinate up here okay, was 9. And it would be true for both of these, okay? So I'm going to put 9 in for x. So we're borrowing this other coordinate. Vertex doesn't have anything to do with the factor form, but we're going to borrow it temporarily and solve for a. Hopefully all that makes some sense, right? So we're going to plug it in, solve for a. 4.05 equals a times, well, that's going to be 9. And that's going to be negative 9. Okay, 4.05. Close and we'll multiply those. Let's put our coefficient in the front like we typically would be. Okay, and then we're going to divide both sides by negative 81 so that a is alone and it is negative, go figure, 0 0.05. We knew it was going to be a fraction because it's so wide, right? All right, well, that's what we need to write our equation in the form that we chose, the form that we chose was factored. So f of x equals, we have our a value now, negative 0 0.05, and we had x minus 18, and x minus 0. Okay, we're going to try this with a different one on the back here. So give me just one minute. If you want to pause this, maybe take a little brain break for a second. You're obviously welcome to do that. Another shape that we could do is this example, again, in some construction of the hull of a ship. Okay, so hull is this bottom part, right? And in this case, um, I've kind of, I've already cut off by my mistake, I'll tell you, uh, the parameters that were given to us, okay? But the parameters were that the length of this ship, okay? Oh, actually, I, don't, I didn't cut off the parameters. They're here on, on our um, x and y axis. Apologize for that. Um, so the length here, our height, right, goes up to this. It's hard to see, but that's 7. And over here is 140. So again, if our process was, well, let's, you know, draw a sketch and label it. Well, this coordinate right here is when x is 140, y is 
seven. Right? And over here, when x is zero, y is seven. So the height of the ship is seven. I don't know what our unit is. Um, and then I could figure out what the minimum in our case here is. 70 and when, when y is 0. So this is like our h and our k. And remember these are our roots over here. Actually they aren't roots, I'm sorry about that. Those are just other points, right? We have our y-intercept, our c-value. Okay. So given a choice on this, because this is our, you know, uh, our, the other format that we didn't use on the other one, I think I'd like us to do vertex form on this one. So if we copy down what we know about vertex form, remember these are really important aspects when we're, we're uh, talking about writing equations, okay? So in vertex form, um, we would put our h and our k here, right? So in our case, h is 70, and the k value is 0. And we can't assume we know what this is. We know it's going to be positive, but we know probably also that it's going to be some kind of a, a fraction because it's pretty wide, right? Okay, so the next step, remember, is that I have to be able to solve for a. So that means I have to get rid of this x and this y so that the only variable is a. So I'm going to choose one of the other coordinates, other parameters, to plug in temporarily so I can solve for a. I could choose either one of these, but I think I'm going to do that one, right? Because that one would be nice and easy with the zero in it, right? So when x is zero, we've got y being seven. Right? And we're going to be solving for this a. We still have the minus 70, and you know, that plus zero, might as well leave it off, right? Okay, just keep solving, right? 7 equals a times, well, negative 70 squared. 7 equals, this is going to be, I'm going to switch our order so our coefficient is in front, 4900 a. Divide both sides by that. Right now, I know what a equals, and if we reduce that, one over seven hundred. Sorry about that. I did all that, and you couldn't see it. <laughs> so now that I know what a is, I can go back to, like I said, what our chosen format was vertex form. I know that a is 1 over 700. We knew it would be a fraction. We know it's positive, right, because it opens upward. x minus, and in our case, 70. And I could say plus 0. Sorry, squeeze that in. But there's really no need to do that, right? Okay, so the practice you're going to do is um, some matching that, given those parameters, those coordinates, what format would you choose? And you need to find the equation that's going to match it. Um, clearly, you're going to have to do that work first and then just look for the correct answer. There's going to be some that are going to be very similar, so it's not something you can just do some guess and check, okay? I think you have five attempts on it, all right? Best of luck, and as usual, you can always contact me if you need any help, okay? Bye, guys.